If we allow Borders are Harris to win this election, every city, every community in this great country is going to go to hell. The untold millions of people, unvetted, who she has allowed into this country that are committing murders, rapes, robberies, burglaries, and every other crime will continue to put our country in peril. Only one man can fix that. That is Donald J. Trump. He has always stood with the men and women who protect this border, who put their lives on the line for the country. A man who knows about putting his life on the line for what is right. This November, we have a choice to make. Continue the chaos. Allow the criminal cartels to control the border, to allow drugs and fentanyl across our country, or put an end to it once and for all. On behalf of the 16,000 men and women represented by the National Board of Patrol Council, we strongly support and endorse Donald J. Trump for President of the United States. I have, a, I have an amazing story to tell you real quick about what President Trump's father, Fred Trump, did for myself, for my brother, for my sister, for my mother. 1974, my dad suffered a major heart attack. I went to the same school as Donald Trump, the Q Forest School. Three days after my father's burial, there was a knock on the door. One school morning, 7 a.m., I answered the door. It was a distinguished gentleman. I was 10 years old. My father just died. The gentleman said, kid, call your mom. I called my mom from, from upstairs. She came down. The gentleman said to my mom, I am Fred Trump, Donald's father. And my mom says, yes, I know Donald went to the Q Forest School. And Mr. Fred Trump said to my mom, yes, Mrs. Rem, very sorry about Joseph's death. And what you don't know is I'm still on the board of trustees at the Q Forest School. And this morning, I let headmaster Mr. Philip Rogers know that from this day forward, myself, Fred Trump, out of my own pocket, is going to pay for your three children's tuition because I don't want the kids to have to go back into the public school system. And the tuition... The tuition in 1974 was $2,500 per child, $7,500, which is about $80,000, $100,000 in today's money. And who would do that except the President Trump's father? The fruit doesn't fall far from the tree, and they give the Trump family grief. The Trump family is a wonderful family, the entire family, sorry. And who else? You, you, can you picture Joseph Biden or Camilla Harris doing that? No. All they care about is buying another mansion. I'm going to tell you, the Trump family is wonderful. I love you, Donald. I wish I could shake your hand. It was my mother's last dying wish to shake your hand and to thank your father, Fred Trump, for what he did for us kids in 1974 in Forest Hills, New York. I love you, President. All the way back to 1974, guys, that man waited 50 years to shake DJT's hand in order to thank him on behalf of Mr. Trump Sr. Wow. Now, we really need to get this story out there, guys, especially with all the mainstream media dirt that they're trying to fling at the former president. You know what I mean? If you could only watch one Trump video today, make sure it's this one. In one of his recent rallies, former President Donald Trump greets the man whose tuition was paid for by his father, Fred Trump. I want you guys to watch how genuine our presidential nominee is as he even pushes away the Secret Service to get to this guy.
Internet personality Bo London shared the video on X and told the story. After David Rem's father passed, Fred Trump paid for the school tuition of all of his siblings. He said that the fake news media won't report this, so we better share this video in order to make sure it goes viral. Well, you heard the man, right guys? Share this video with like-minded people, even those that you think could benefit from a perspective change with regard to former President Donald Trump, you know what I mean? But yeah, it's really a shame if the story doesn't get more coverage. Nobody will ever show what former President Donald J. Trump and his father have done for private citizens and others. Because it sounds like they've both got a heart of gold here. It's not easy doing what they do, giving to others who have not. But seriously, guys, David Rem's story about Donald Trump's father, it truly shows what kind of person raised him. And it looks like David has attended more than one rally to share his Trump story. And while Donald Trump shows the people his softer side, he also doesn't forget to show his tougher one. Case in point, National Border Patrol Council just endorsed him in Arizona. Yeah. Yeah, more on that one later, you guys. I remember when I realized my income was stuck. No matter how hard I worked, I felt like I just kept hitting a ceiling, but then something clicked. It wasn't just about how much effort I was putting in. It was about the people that I surrounded myself with. And once I started connecting with more successful people, all of a sudden things started to change for me. So imagine being a part of a community where success is the standard, where everyone pushes each other to be better. That's exactly what the Life Pursuit Network offers for less than a dollar a day. You can surround yourself with people who will elevate your game. Don't let your current environment limit you. Hit the link in the description down below. Join us and start building your future with the right connections. But first, let's talk more about Donald Trump's more meaningful moments with his supporters, all right? Because that guy with the tuition story isn't the only supporter Donald Trump has helped out in his rallies. Just recently, Donald Trump chose to cut a Pennsylvania town hall short after two medical emergencies unfolded in the crowd. The campaign town hall at the Greater Philadelphia Expo Center in Fairgrounds in Oaks, Pennsylvania was first stopped when South Dakota Governor Kristi Noem, the event's first host, was discussing Vice President Kamala Harris's appearance on The View and slamming the Democratic nominee's support for President Biden's energy policies. Donald Trump noticed a commotion in the crowd and said, hold it, a doctor please. He then thanked the doctor and said how they have incredible people there. They come hours before and it's a little hot. He told the doctor to take their time and said that they always have great doctors in the audience, so they've never had too much of a problem. He talked about how it's incredible when you think about these people. First responders or first responders are amazing. They didn't get it on camera, but the New York Post reported that a heavyset middle-aged man was wheeled out on a stretcher with his shirt cut open. Donald Trump said to wait until they could take care of this incredible person who he guarantees is a great patriot. He said that everybody in the room is a patriot. He even requested that Ava Marie be sounded over the loudspeaker like it had been at his recent comeback rally in Butler, Pennsylvania, in honor of firefighter Corey Comperator, the rally goer that was killed during the first assassination attempt on Donald Trump's life on July 13th. So they continued. Trump began his response about border security before the crowd yelled again about another medical situation. The former president stood up and looked into the crowd saying, take your time, doctor. He said for security reasons, they can't open the doors. But Trump said, just open them because anybody comes through those doors, you know what's going to happen. He commented how it was really warm in the venue and they've got a lot of people who love America. So from there, looking at the state of the crowd, Donald Trump then decided not to take more questions from the crowd and called on organizers to play music in the venue instead. You see, this is the kind of man that he is. He cares enough about his supporters that he can just adjust for them. You know what I mean, guys? That kind of care is really what sets him apart. A British friend of mine. He told me how much he adores former President Donald Trump from across the pond. He said that he's even fasting and praying for Donald J. Trump to win the presidency. Can you believe that, guys? I mean, we got people all the way from Europe showing their support for the Republican nominee. It's crazy. But drop a quick yes in the comments down below. Hit the like button if you guys want to show your support as well for President Donald Trump. And hey, if you guys want more content like this sent straight to your phones, straight to your tablets, laptops, TVs, don't hesitate to subscribe to the channel and tap that notification bell. Now, on the topic of Donald Trump's genuineness, here's something, guys. A comparison of his and Kamala Harris's answer to the same question in their respective Univision town halls, it names three venues of their political opponent. You see, while Vice President Kamala Harris struggled to say three nice things about him during the town hall, Donald Trump was easily able to offer compliments to Kamala Harris. I guess this kind of shows how nice of a guy he is. 
Now, first, he said that she's harmed our country horribly, horribly at the border with inflation, with so many other things. But he also added that she seems to have an ability to survive and that she seems to have some pretty long time friendships. Also, that she seems to have a nice way about her. The week before, the same voter asked Kamala Harris to name three virtues Trump has, which prompted an awkward laugh from the Democratic nominee. All Kamala Harris was able to come up with was that she doesn't admire what she called language that about belittling people and calling them names and meant to make them afraid and live in fear. She said she's quite critical of it coming from someone who wants to be president of the United States. But then again, she's the one that's calling Donald Trump a threat to democracy, isn't she? She did mention how Donald Trump loves his family. But apart from that, Kamala said that she really doesn't know him and she doesn't really have much more to offer you. Well, doesn't that pretty much describe the whole Kamala package? Not much to offer you? You heard it for yourself, guys, straight from Kamala's mouth. Not much to offer you. Now, by the way, guys, if you haven't already, feel free to join us over in our Patreon community. I've left a link for you guys in the description down below. Over there, you'll find early release content, an amazing community of patriots, and exclusive content that I just can't post here. So make sure to click the link in the description down below. Join us on our Patreon community. I'll see you guys on the other side. Another topic that Kamala Harris doesn't have much to offer, border security and the illegal immigration crisis. Confirming that is the official union of the U.S. Border Patrol as they announced its full support of former President Donald Trump during a rally in Prescott Valley, Arizona. So during the rally, Donald Trump told the crowd that that he was honored to receive the endorsement of the National Border Patrol Council. He said that it's a great honor and that they said it was unanimous. Thousands of people. He then invited Paul Perez, the president of the National Border Patrol Council, onto the stage. Perez said he had a message for everyone in the crowd. He promised every city, every community in this great country is going to go to hell if they allow border czar Harris to win this election. Wow, that's one heck of an endorsement, isn't it? He also said that the untold millions of people unvetted who she allowed into this country that are committing murders, rapes, robberies, burglaries, and every other crime will continue to put our country in peril. On the other hand, he offered an alternative. He said only one man can fix that. That is Donald J. Trump. According to the president of the National Border Patrol Council, Trump has always stood with the men and women who protect this border, who put their lives on the line for the country. And it's not just them, guys. Kamala Harris' campaign is well aware that it lost its momentum and is now struggling to keep up with Donald Trump until Election Day. According to many critics, despite raising a billion dollars, despite overwhelmingly positive coverage by mainstream media, she has failed to deliver a compelling message and is struggling to win over black and Latino voters. So basically, Democrats, they're now panicking. So who thinks that they're going to put Joe Biden back in at the last minute? I mean, really? I wouldn't put it past them, would you? They don't call Donald Trump. Trump Teflon Don for nothing, right? The press may jump on him for whatever they can come up with, but his supporters, they tend to stand behind him 100%. In fact, the MAGA loyalists can't stand the media and they're not going to change their minds at this late date. He has the advantage of having held the job. People can't help but remember Trump's presidency with growing fondness, particularly for a strong economy and greater limits at the border. Harris has certainly made policy proposals and done a bunch of softball interviews. She did go on Fox, but bungled that up as well. But she really made a big mistake on The View, guys saying that she couldn't think of a single thing that she'd be doing differently from Joe Biden. Huge mistake. So is she labeling herself as Joe Biden 2.0? But at the same time, though, Axios and others are reporting tension between the Harris and Biden camps. Let me go ahead and read you guys just a quick breakdown from British American author and editor Andrew Sullivan. Check this out. The more I listen to her in these interviews, the more worried I became that she doesn't actually believe in anything. Her team either fears or knows that she may not be up to it. And this is bleeding obvious. A presidential campaign where you rarely face the press, never deal with a hostile interview, and never hold a presser is a campaign defined by fear. You could smell it miles away. Oh, and by the way, even with all that being said, Andrew Sullivan is still voting for Harris. Go figure. I guess, to put it simply, it looks like the vice president hasn't been able to generate the excitement that surrounded her initial campaign launch. Some even say that the excitement really wasn't even there in the first place. But you're sitting next to people that don't like you at all. Chuck Schumer's so how right was there. that? Yeah. You know, I know him very well. I guess he doesn't like, but he likes me enough. It's, uh, it's a little bit, it's uh, hard to explain. Do you know I gave... Donald Trump is about to share a little bit of history between him and Chuck Schumer that even surprised me. And you'll never guess who pretty much gave Chuck Schumer his start, his initial run. 
Take a listen. I mean, you, you had a balance because you're, you got to tell these jokes, but you're sitting next to people that don't like you at all. Chuck Schumer, so right how there. was that? You know, I know him very well. I guess he doesn't like, but he likes me enough. It's, uh, it's a little bit, it's uh, hard to explain. You know, I gave him his first check. When he was young, I was young. It was his first check. I don't know if that good or bad, <laughs> but it was the first check that he ever got. He was running for, I think, assembly up in New York, and uh, he got it from me. So so we should blame you, you know. for the rise of Chuck Schumer. It's all on you. Me for right. He's defeating Al Bottom. It was New York. <laughs> what did Mayor Adams say to you? Because you were... Y'all now, I, I, we got to touch on this just a little bit because Chuck Schumer's a Democrat. So at one point, uh, Donald Trump was supporting a Democrat, but I think... What has happened, and and if you if you look at the history, because uh, he was uh, Donald Trump was talking to Oprah one day uh, about, and I don't know if, how many of you guys remember, Donald Trump was actually uh, having an interest in having Oprah Winfrey run with him uh, if he would have run for president and have Oprah Winfrey be his vice president. So I mean, obviously that was a long time ago, uh, and at one point there were a number of celebrities and politicians that once loved him actually supported this guy and i just find it really interesting how many of them have turned his back but what i think here has happened is that donald trump realized that the democratic party uh has literally lost their mind and has gone completely radically left and he couldn't side with them anymore and now I think this is why he is a member. Donald Trump's a member of the Republican Party at this time. Let me know what y'all think on that one, though. I mean, he's a Democrat. You're a Republican, but you can relate because of these subpoenas. Yeah. Letitia James, she was in the back row. The weaponization. No, I, it's, it's look, I've been investigated more than Alphonse Capone. I say it. <laughs> but Adams, he came out against the immigrants, you know, against the, the mm -hmm. destruction of New York, frankly. He did the right thing. I said, he will be indicted within six months. And he was. They indicted him. Wow. Now, I don't know if it's legit. I haven't looked at it. But it, it seems very suspicious when he, when he comes out against something. They're, doing. they're destroying the country. They are destroying our country. He was right. I, I, I go down the streets of New York. I went down the streets of New York two days ago. And I'm looking at migrants all over Madison Avenue, all over Fifth Avenue. I've never seen anything like it. I'll tell you, I've never seen This is New York. Uh, you see empty stores. You never saw empty stores on Madison Avenue. You never see them. It's a, it's a shame. He did the right thing, but he got indicted. And uh, I got to talk about this because look at this here. Here you have Donald Trump, a Republican president. And I'm getting blinded by his son here. I think the son's going to go down in just a second. So I'm going I'm to I'm gonna try to bear with it. But Donald Trump here is uh, basically giving props to New York City Mayor Eric Adams for coming out and saying, hey, this sanctuary city situation here is destroying our, our our city donald trump has indicated multiple times just now that he agrees with mayor new york mayor eric adams um that this is a problem and and that this can't continue so i, I think it's very interesting because donald trump is complimenting and agreeing with a democrat you never ever when when have you have you guys ever once heard Kamala Harris ever agree with anything uh Donald Trump has said being a Republican you you see what I'm saying it's like Donald Trump is clearly more of a bipartisan give and take uh give credit where credit is due type of individual compared to Kamala Harris her whole campaign is based on seemingly trashing Donald Trump with no sense of uh, policy. Uh, they play weaponization. These are an evil group of people. These are really a bad group of people. I'm doing well with my stuff. I won in Florida. I won, I'm winning all over the place. But, you know, what they want to do is keep him busy. Let me spend plenty of money fighting it and let him maybe. Mm -hmm. But I think so far it's backfired because the public understands. The win in Florida, that was the big case. That was the case, oh, you're going to lose. Now, he actually lost because he had documents, but he didn't have the you're presidential. the documents case yeah. in Florida. It was the documents mm -hmm. case. That was, like, they say the big one. I don't know what's the big one, but the big one. And we had a very brilliant judge, a very fair judge, and I won the case. I won the whole thing. <clears throat> he didn't win. They said he was grossly incompetent, and based on that, they're not going to charge him. But mm -hmm. it, the funny is, he can be president... But he can't go to court. They say he can't go to court because he's incompetent. So he can't go to court. So that's okay. But he's allowed to be president. 
So there's something wrong with our country when that when that yeah. happens. But that uh, makes no sense. Donald uh, Joe Biden can be president of the United States, be but he's not competent, mentally competent enough to stand trial. But he can have the nuclear codes. Come on, guys. Uh, I thought last night, Steve. I thought last night Steve, it was great. I think it was terrible that you missed it because. Uh, it's only been one person missed it in many years, and that's Walter Mondale. He lost 49 to 1. Uh, but let me ask you, why 49 you to 1. With? Mr. President, why do you think she missed it? There's a lot of theories. Okay, I think that she's not competent. I don't want to say this kind of stuff, but I, we can't live with this. We're not going to be able to live with this. So you don't think she's funny? I don't think she's funny. I don't think, <laughs> look, her staff, she's got 5% of her staff stayed with her, 95% quit. If that happened to me, I'd be front page of every... Nobody likes her. Nobody wants to be with her. And I only say this, I don't like even saying it, but we can't have her as a president. She's a Marxist. No. We're not ready for a Marxist. Do you agree with that? Anderson? I do agree with As you. An I think a Marxist. Yeah, let me ask you this. And, she, and she's not very good, let's just face it. Closing argument time, because we're only yeah. two and a half weeks um, until the election. So this is the final... This is it. So she... Realize, joy, joy, joy. That's not working for them. Not so now they've well. they've changed it. <laughs> they're they, desperate now. Now they're ramping up their rhetoric. And when she sat down with Brett Baer, she said, "Talking about you, he's unstable." When she uh, was speaking at a rally in Erie, Pennsylvania, she called you unstable and unhinged. And then in this new ad that they've rolled out, she's saying unhinged, more unstable, and unchecked. And then this caller that called into Charlemagne the God his Breakfast Club show. Um, this caller says, I have a sneaking suspicion that if Trump wins, he's going to use this law to put anyone that doesn't look white in camps. And I'm scared. And she says, yeah. So you've hit on a really important point. What is your response and what is your closing argument? Before, I, before we even hear from Donald Trump on this one, just ask yourself, for any, regardless of who wins the presidential election, how does that make any sense that one particular race or uh, demographic would be able to be put in jail by the winning president purely because of the, the race or the color of their skin. Like, please, does that make any sense at all to you guys? I mean, I, I feel like if anyone would be f scared after hearing some rumor like that, that individual would have to be just a complete idiot. But I don't know. Y'all let me know. Well, first of all, the question is a pretty rough question because, uh, you know, you're giving this whole argument of this woman that I don't think she knows where she is. Uh, she's a low IQ person. She's not smart. Everyone knows that. Uh, didn't even pass her law exam. It was a big thing. She never thought she was going to be able to pass it. Uh, you know, if you tell me this stuff, I'll say it. Uh, I am a, a person that they are a threat to democracy. These people are misinformation people. They'll say, let's go out with this one. They've tried many different things. Uh, they tried, he's a dictator. He's going to take over the whole world. He's a this. It, every week they try something else. So far it hasn't worked. I guess that's the attack they have for this week. It doesn't seem to be working. Uh, I am the most stable human being. But what do you guys think? In your own words, like, how would you compare Donald Trump's campaign versus Kamala Harris's campaign? Really, like, who's showing more heart between these two? Hit me up in the comments down below. Let me know what you guys think on this one. We can circle back around in a future update. And hey, while I have you, I just want to recommend our other videos right here on the channel. We just did one on Kamala Harris's Fox News interview, and boy, was it a doozy. She was flipping and flopping and trying to word salad her way through the whole thing. Definitely a must must watch after this one guys make sure you guys check that one out right after this one but as always thanks so much for watching thanks for hitting the like button join us over in our patreon community there's a link in the description down below thanks for sharing this video and i'll see you guys next time